One of the anchors of your office is really its autonomy and independence. But when you look at the budgetary allocations, do you feel that you're adequately resourced to exercise your mandate in a very autonomous manner? Uh, Mboko, um, when you are assessing um, the independence of the Office of the Auditor General, world over, uh, there are various parameters that we look at. Uh, first of all, is there a broad legal framework in terms of the constitution and the public uh, and a public audit act, or a, a public uh, or, a, or a legal framework for for public audit apart from from the constitution? Then we look at uh, how is the auditor general appointed, and is there security of tenure? And then we look at the mandate. Is the mandate broadly specified? And I have to say, our constitution, the public audit act, has gone a long way in ensuring the independence of of, of, of this office. However. For the Auditor General and the Office of the Auditor General to be completely independent, even in terms of mandate, in terms of uh, activities, in terms of operations, you need funding. Now, funding is the base for all independence. If you're not adequately uh, funded, then it erodes away all other independence that we have gained through the, the, the Constitution and the Public Audit Act. And I must say that is where, as an Audit Office, because we go through peer reviews, uh, that is where we, we, we get scored very low in terms of financial independence because we have to go through the National Treasury, who is our key client. Uh, and that is where we also score very low as, as a country uh, in terms of the independence of, of, of the Auditor General. So we are not adequately resourced. If we were, we'd be able to do in-year audits. We'd be able to provide recommendations, raise issues before the end of the financial year. There would be implementation. By the time the financial year is coming to a close, the reporting uh, or the reports that, that come out or that are issued by the entities, the financial statements, they'll already have amended and, of course, uh, uh, put in the necessary measures and strengthen the internal controls. But now we are coming in at, at, at the end. Yeah, yeah funding is, is key. And just uh, a clarification on that point you've raised. Um, is your view then that uh, we should decouple the Office of the Auditor General from the National Treasury to the extent that budget estimates must come from that side? How would you envision it working then? Um, what I'm advocating um, is that we know the entire budget of the country. We know that that budget needs to be audited or oversighted. Then can we have a percentage of that budget ring first, created in form of a fund for the Office of the Auditor General? such that when the budget expands, like when we had this, this, this pandemic, when we have in this pandemic, you know, the budget had to expand uh, because of the various uh, measures that the government had to put in place. Then, consequently, the budget of the Office of the Auditor General needs to expand so that we can oversight on that expanded uh, budget. We can look at the projects that are being implemented, but that has not been the case. So we are advocating uh, a percentage of the national budget and a fund that is created and ring-fenced and protected. Let's talk about pending bills. There was an audit that was conducted. We ended up with the eligible versus the ineligible pending bills. Mm -hmm. We understand that a number of counties wrote back to Treasury and said, no, we don't agree with these figures, especially on the eligibility part. Can this be sent back to the Auditor General? First, how far are you with this? And second, what really is the underlying problem around pending bills? Because uh, year in, year out, it's an issue. It, it was even one of the stimulus packages under the COVID-19 relief. Uh, pending bills has become a serious issue uh, in this country. And I don't know whether the entities that are not paying for services uh, rent, uh, received or for goods delivered are realizing that they are part of, that is part of what's killing the economy. Because the, the SMEs that supply these, these goods and services need to be paid so that they can also pay the taxes, so that there's increased revenue collection. And... Uh, in, in, in build their businesses. Now, I, I, I am not very comfortable that year in, year out, the National Treasury uh, requests the Auditor General to go and confirm what is uh, eligible and what is eligible to pay. Because that makes me part of the operations of the entities. Now, we talked about internal controls. If the internal controls in those uh, entities are working, if the internal auditors are working, they should be able to know within the entity whether the bills they have are eligible or ineligible. Unless we are saying the entire system has collapsed and there's nobody in those entities that can stand up and be counted to say what the, the truth of the matter is. Uh, National Treasury has requested, it's in the public domain, that we do an, uh, another audit. Uh, I am considering that because uh, it is important, but we must address the root cause. Why are we not paying the bills? 
Is it lack of money? Are we overstretching ourselves? Are we taking on programs that were not budgeted for in the first place? Or are we just uh, having fiscal indiscipline? Can't pay, won't pay. So those things need to be, to be looked at. One of the grave concerns out here regarding your office is that uh, whereas you might do a stellar job as far as audit and recommendations are concerned, implementation and sanctions are the weak point. Do you share this view? Yes, that, that has been an issue with us. Uh, there is a weakness on our side and there is a weakness on the side of uh, those who should be implementing the audit recommendations. Now, first of all, on our side, uh, and this is something we, I, I started addressing from the onset, uh, it's about tracking the audit recommendations that we've issued and looking at what are the cross-cutting issues because some of these audit recommendations are not specific or unique to an entity. They are cross-cutting across the, the, the country. So we need to find out what needs to be done to address those, those, uh, those issues. Now, secondly, is on the side of implementation. We issue audit recommendations. Parliament also issues uh, its final reports. Now, it is the onus is on the entities and the executive to ensure that those recommendations are implemented so that when we come the following year to audit, at least there's some improvement. But there's this perennial cycle of us reporting. Uh, our, our audit reports sometimes are very disappointing because we, we will start a paragraph with us reported in the prior year. And, and that, that is not good for an auditor. You feel like you've not achieved much. So we are looking at the sanctions that are advocated in the Public uh, Audit Act, and we want to harmonize with the sanctions that are advocated in the Public uh, Finance Management Act to ensure that uh, uh, action takes place and there are consequences for not uh, implementing uh, uh, the audit recommendations, and they are harmonized. The, um, the audit of um, debt in this country is as a matter of great interest. As a matter of fact, your predecessor had a lot of um, points to say about the euro bond and the audit um, issues around it. Um, just keen to know your thoughts around uh, the whole audit process when it comes to focusing on public debt and uh, whether we are um, still focusing on this matter of euro bonds or it was a case closed entirely. Mm. It, it is important uh, uh, that we, we get full, full disclosure information. It's in the public limelight that uh, public debt is, is a source of concern uh, for this country. And uh, that is part of our mandate. We are mandated to audit all expenditures, all entities, including public debt. It's actually specified in the Constitution that, that we audit public debt. Uh, we did audit Eurobond and we did issue a report in 2019 uh, that is uh, to Parliament. So we expect now Parliament to take it up from there. Are you, are you bothered that uh, since 2019 we are still, you know, waiting on Parliament on this matter? Uh, because I have, uh, I'm not privy, or I've not been privy uh, to what Parliament is, uh, is uh, or how Parliament is planning to consider the report, or whether maybe they, they did make a decision, uh, I'm not privy to that. So this could be an area that I may need to, to, to find out. Uh, because if there were recommendations, uh, as we continue auditing public debt, and uh, there is a unit that uh, have recently set up, uh, specific to look at some of this area as part of uh, performance audit on, on public debt because it's in the public limelight and we have to respond to, to, to what uh, the, 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 the stakeholders are clamoring for. Uh, then we need to follow up from there and see what recommendations are uh, implemented. Even if not through Parliament, but because the report was also issued to the National Treasury, uh, probably uh, we'll find out if they have implemented. One of the challenges we have around uh, our assessment of public debt is just the opacity of the nature of the contracts we enter into. And one question I get recurrently is, um, is the Office of the Auditor General um, given access to the knowledge and the information around, for example, what collateral is attached to some of the debt we secure from various entities, whether it is a commercial or uh, non-commercial? Hmm. I, I think um, I have, uh, well, I'm not taking up the, the mantle. I have not had any complaints about uh, not getting adequate uh, information uh, when it comes to, to public debt, uh, especially on that particular Eurobond uh, audit, because the audit, the audit was actually done and finalized and, and, and issued. Uh, so I, I may have to find out moving forward as we restructure ourselves, as we continue engaging with the National Treasury and the public debt unit. Uh, can we come to an agreement on how we will proceed so that we get full disclosure, full information? And if that's not forthcoming, the Public Audit Act is very clear on, 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 on availing documents to, to the Auditor General. You've got very strong sentiments around full accounting and the visibility that you need to have around uh, the declaration of our asset position, our liability position, whether it is with the MDAs, whether it is with the county governments. How far are you with this? 
Um, Amboko, that's an area that uh, I have taken up as uh, one of the areas that I'm advocating for. Uh, because this country needs now more than ever to go into accrual accounting. Uh, so that there's full disclosure of both assets and liabilities. We need to actually have them uh, disclosed and put in the financial statements, not as uh, appendices or, or annexures, but full disclosure. Again, if we go to uh, accrual accounting, uh, the accounting officers are able to even gauge themselves and measure uh, where are you heading in terms of your budgeting, where are you heading in terms of your work plans, uh, where are you having, because we, we, we stop calling pending bills, pending bills, and we call them liabilities, that you owe money. Uh, this is not a, a, a term that is camouflaged, but it actually comes out that this is actually liabilities that you need to pay. So I have been in, in, in communication with the Public Sector Accounting Standards Board. I have also raised this matter with the National Treasury that we need to fast track this uh, moving to accrual accounting. We have been uh, sort of shifting it uh, every, every year, but I think it's time now we looked at it in terms of can we disclose our assets because can we disclose our liabilities? Uh, can we have more clear uh, information uh, out there? published and, and, and publicized. The state of the country's wage bill is a matter of uh, grave interest and uh, one of the issues around it is uh, the subject of ghost workers. Yeah. When you go through your audit process and you're looking at the country's wage bill and how it's weighing on the taxpayer, um, what steps are being made especially in terms of weeding out this? And this is in two fronts. One is on the the month to month payroll, the other is on the pension side because pension fund life uh, are again a huge burden uh, on the exchequer. If you could uh, just shed some light on this. Yeah. Uh, it, that, that is a, f uh, a, a source of concern because wage bill is part of the current expenditure. And uh, when you have a huge wage bill, it means resources that should go to development are going to recurrent expenditure. And uh, we have to look at what is the root cause of, 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 of the rising wage bill. Um, is it salary increase? I doubt. Is it numbers? Maybe. And most likely it's the numbers. And we have to look at what happened, for example, let's go to counties, for example. We had the different local authority staff, then counties came on board, new employees were, uh, were employed, new staff were employed. Then we went to another tranche, additional staff were employed. Then we had national government staff that were also uh, uh, devolved or for, the, for, for, for the devolved um, 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 operations that are there. So we need to, to, to address that. That Do we need to continue recruiting? I don't know. Or do we need to ensure that the people we have are utilized as effectively uh, as possible so that there's, there's, there's proper impact? And if people are utilized properly, then you find that you can do better with less. But when you have too many people, even sharing uh, eight hours of work, it's, some people might be, might be idle. So uh, what we're doing now, um, uh, we want to, it's part of uh, the audits that we're looking at. How can we address this issue? How can we go in depth into the issue of, uh, of, of human resource? And uh, we want to go into data analytics just to compare. This is a wage bill. These are the numbers. These are the grades. These are the salaries. Is there an issue? then if there's an issue, then you either know this could be, uh, as you're calling them, uh, what did you call them, ghost, ghost workers, or there could be another issue altogether. It's us looking at our methodology for, for auditing this area. Okay, so, so just to be clear, you um, wouldn't have a sense of how bad the situation is uh, for the ghost workers? as it Unless is. I do a special audit, because I know most entities have been doing headcounts and uh, weeding out, uh, unless now I carry out a, a, a special audit a comprehensive special audit. At the moment, I wouldn't be able to, to say specifically without concrete data, and I wouldn't want to speculate. The matter of um, great discussion out here right now is the subject of um, expenditure around COVID-19, and for understandable reasons. We've had an economic cost, we've had a health cost, and your office has largely been looked at as the last bastion of hope as far as um, laying to the table what the situation actually is. What guarantee can you give Kenyans? We, we will continue doing the audit for COVID-19. The remaining audits are going to be issued. The issues we are raising are going to be highlighted. Uh, currently, uh, every entity uh, that disclosed that they've expended COVID-19 uh, funds uh, is also being audited. And what we're going to do is consolidate uh, these this reports 
so that we have a, a high level view of what, 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 what is happening or what has been happening. And uh, what I'm planning to do is uh, issue in, 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 in the summary report the cross-cutting issues with regard to how we uh, responded to COVID-19. Because Samboko, it's not only about COVID-19. It's about future pandemics. It's about future disasters. It's about future crisis. Are we ready? Are we prepared? Uh, and can we manage it uh, when, when, when lives and livelihoods are at stake? And that point by Madam Nancy Gadungu takes us to the close of our conversation where we've been focusing on her role as the Auditor General, matters of expenditure, public, whether it's at the county level or national level. Stay tuned to NTV for more programming.